in about a week, we have a fight. Everyone, everyone is excited about. You guys got to excuse my voice. <clears throat> Mikey Garcia steps up to the welterweight plate to take on one of boxing's best fastball pitches in Errol Spence Jr. Everybody is excited about this fight. Everybody. That's great. Yeah, man. The PBC is the best. And while I don't want to make this video a hit piece on Premier Boxing, I also have to call people out for who they are. Before I do, allow me one caveat. I'm going to be critical to hundreds of thousands of fans and to thousands of so-called members of the media. <clears throat> I think Spence Jr. versus Garcia will be a decent fight as long as it lasts. But the world is so excited about this fight. I mean, everyone I talked to said, man, I, I can't wait for that Garcia and Spence. Yeah, man. Fox's first pay-per-view under this platform. Cowboy Stadium. Jerry Jones. Let's scroll back to September 10th, 2016. Gennady Golovkin, admittedly one of my favorites, took on Kell Brook. Golovkin is a middleweight, albeit a small one, but still a middleweight. Golovkin was roasted for fighting a smaller guy. But did he really fight a smaller guy? Let's look a little deeper. When he did the 30-day weigh-in, Golovkin weighed 165 pounds, five pounds over the middleweight limit. Kell Brook weighed 176 pounds. That's 16 pounds over the limit, folks. With eight days remaining until the fight, Golovkin weighed 162 pounds. Brooke came in at 168 pounds. And on fight night, who was bigger? Brooke looked like the Incredible Hulk in there. <clears throat> Golovkin looked like, well, Golovkin. <clears throat> Kell Brooke is bigger than Triple G. He just so happens to fight at a lower weight where he can circumvent the rules a little bit. Not out and out cheating, but these guys out here like Errol Spence Jr. or Jared Hurd or Jamal Charlo or uh, Jaime Munguia wouldn't be able to sidestep same day weigh-ins the way it used to be. Nobody wanted to hear the Brook is naturally bigger argument or, or even do the research themselves. But they roasted the Lovekin instead. And I'm going to overuse that word roasted. Saying he was exposed after getting hit by Brook. And once the Lovekin won, they said, well, Brook was a guy who's two weight classes below him. Why won't Golovkin fight someone his own size? Hey, man. He didn't pick Brook. Let's put that rumor to the myth category. Remember, the old man was supposed to fight Chris Eubank Jr., <clears throat> who played games, and then it pulled out at the last minute. And Golovkin, who was always... A very busy fighter until the, the Canelo fights he hadn't fought in five months 
and he wanted to keep that date. So Brooks stepped in. <clears throat> then let's go to December 9th, 2017. Okay. A guy named Vasily Lomachenko took on Guillermo Rigondeau. Now, before the fight, the fanboys were out there saying, man, Rigo's going to break Loma's jaw, just like he did to uh, Jazza Dickens. He's going to break his jaw. He finally stepping up to fight somebody. <clears throat> That's what half the fanboys were saying. The other half were saying, well, I'm rooting for Rigo, but they already had the built-in Loma is too big excuse. But was he? If you remember, Lomachenko was at lower weights, but couldn't get the other champions to fight him. So he moved up. But look at the weigh-in. Go back and look at the weigh-in. It was, it was one of the <laughs> most intense, if not funniest, stare-downs ever. I mean, they, they, it seemed like they stood there for two minutes. and It was probably a minute long stare-down. But you can go on YouTube. If I remember to put it below, I'll put it below. But go, go back to the stare-down. Look at the weigh-in. Lomachenko is not the bigger man. He's the taller man, but not the bigger man. Um, look at the definition of Rigo's arms at the weigh-in. He's bigger, not taller, but he was ripped. Look at his arms. Rigo quit, and then the excuses came. Everyone wanted to see the fight, but then when he quit, oh, he's too small, and Lomachenko got roasted, just as Golovkin got roasted. <clears throat> fight somebody your own size. <clears throat> he's two weight classes bigger. You call yourself pound for pound number one, fighting little guys? I mean, he got roasted. So Golovkin roasted for fighting Brooke. Loma roasted for fighting Rigo. But everybody's looking forward to Spence Jr. versus Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia, a guy, realistically, three weight classes. Or Spence Jr., a guy, realistically, three weight classes heavier. How come nobody's roasting Errol Spence Jr.? I'll tell you why. Sounds like a lot of premier fans disguised as true boxing fans to me. <clears throat> Can't have it both ways. So a guy got into an argument with me on the message board. and I, So I'm like, well, how come you guys aren't going at Spence like you went after Golovkin and um, Lomachenko? And his response was he got a bunch of idiots, I guess, who agreed with him. He called him out. Mikey called him out. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so... If Sean Porter, who uh, got the benefit of a gift victory Saturday night, if Sean Porter said, I don't want to fight um, Spence next, I don't want to fight Thurman, I don't want to fight Garcia, I don't want to fight Crawford, I'm calling out Anthony Joshua. So if Sean Porter did that, and Anthony Joshua said, hell no, I'm not going to fight this guy. Does that make Anthony Joshua a coward? It's like, he called him out. That doesn't make sense. How many people called your hero of the past who may come back out of retirement again? How many people called him out? Did he fight them? Did he fight Paul Williams when Paul Williams called him out? 
who was a welterweight. Come on, man. Like, <clears throat> if you're going to argue, if you're going to give a rebuttal, make some sense. My God. I mean, the good thing is a couple of people who agreed with that argument when I ran something like that at them, they came back and said, well, I get your point. And I should have used a better example than Porter. Let's let's see. AJ's a heavyweight, and then you have the um, the cruiser weight division, and then the light heavyweight. So if Sergey Kovalev or Kovalev, take your pick. If Kovalev, if Kov called out Deontay Wilder, and Wilder doesn't fight him, is is, is Wilder a punk? Is he a, is he a sucker? I mean, it, it, he's two weight classes below him. Let's move on. Deontay Wilder is the Jamal Charlo of his weight class. What does that mean, you might ask? Well, Deontay Wilder and Jamal Charlo, and that, that's... Young Maul, not, not Jermel. They're in trouble. <clears throat> Both of them are in big trouble. Um, there was an offer from the Bob Father, Bob Aaron. And the Bob Father offered Deontay Wilder. I'm not sure of the exact amount. Rumor has it was $12.5 million plus a guarantee. I'm not able to confirm that total. But if true, that's $8.5 million more than his guarantee for the first fight with uh, Tyson Fury. Plus, the second fight will garner more buys than the first, giving Wilder a bigger cut of that pay-per-view percentage, which he probably didn't get in the first fight. Um, I'm not sure if it reached <clears throat> the uh, break-even point or not. Instead, the first move that this idiot made is I'm going to take this fight with Dominic Brazil, which I have no problem with, on pay-per-view, which I have a big problem with. I mean, does that fight get 200,000 buys? And, and if so, it'll only be because Fury made this guy more known. You ask your average person on the street, you show them a picture of Deontay Wilder, and they're like, yeah, didn't he play basketball at uh, Kentucky somewhere or something? So, Aram's offer forced Showtime it, it forced their hand to, to, to keep Wilder content. And the only way they can pay him and keep him content is to make it a pay-per-view. But Wilder Brazil is not pay-per-view worthy. If they go that route, I'm happy for Brazil because I assume his purse goes up in that deal. For Wilder, I... I couldn't be happy or mad. I, I kind of feel sorry for his dumb ass because <clears throat> he, he's in trouble. And I, I'll get into it in a second. Gennady Golovkin signed with the zone, as we said. A month ago <clears throat> if you scroll back on the videos all right the voice is starting to go I'm trying to fight my way through this um, he signed a three-year six-fight deal now Golovkin probably has one or two good fights left in him one or two good fights left in him um, Six fights over three years, I can't see it. 
I think losses will come and maybe someone could be Canelo with those loaded uh, hand wraps, the stacking that he does. Somebody's going to finally drop the old man or, or maybe even stop him, which will be a sad day in my household for boxing because uh, he's also one of my favorites. Um, that or the undefeated Father Time will get him. I mean, or a combination of them both. But either way, at least he'll be fairly compensated for his troubles. <clears throat> uh, by the way, when I said Wilder will be the heavyweight Jamal Charlo, here's what I meant. First, let's talk about Young Maul, okay? And I might get the networks wrong or mixed up on this, but you guys get the idea when I drop these names concerning Wilder and Charlo. So let's start with Young Maul. Saul Alvarez, champion. Daniel Jacobs, champion. You got G. Gennady Golovkin. You got Billy Joe Saunders. You got Demetrius Andre. All the above are DAZN fighters. You got Jeff Horn. You got uh, Rob Brandt, and I believe they're ESPN slash ESPN Plus guys. So everybody who's a champion or like a top 10 that you would want to see him in with, they're on other networks. Charlo is Showtime. So who does he fight in the top 10? Or who does he fight that is a champion? Nobody, unless a deal is cut to loan him to a network to fight or to do a multi-fight deal with a DAZN or to be on an ESPN Plus slash ESPN. In other words, take his career into his own hands like Golovkin just did, like Tevin Farmer did, like Tyson Fury just did. And Wilder and Charlo are two reasons why I said some time ago that Showtime and HBO will be no more at, at least for boxing when I said no more I meant boxing um, <clears throat> Dillian White so let's move on to Wilder Dillian White has a deal almost done with ESPN and top rank Vladimir Klitschko has thrown his name, uh, thrown his hat back into the ring. I'm loving this. This puts Deontay and Al Heyman's backs harder against the wall. My advice, you better sign a deal soon, Deontay. The writing is on the wall. And I always talked about Anthony Joshua versus Wilder happening maybe, maybe in 2020, maybe late 2019, but definitely 2020. Well, you might have to make that 2022 at the rate we're going. If if he doesn't, it, listen, if Deontay Wilder doesn't come to some type of deal outside of Showtime, you may never see AJ versus Wilder. And if you do, I'm seriously, when I say 2022 or 2021, I'm serious. Because if Vladimir Klitschko signs with the zone, then AJ has Jarrell Miller, Derek Chisora, Vladimir Klitschko, um, what's my man named? Pulev, and Usyk, he can fight taking us to about 2022 or at best late 2021 I'm telling you he's he's low he'll be loaded he'll be stacked Tyson Fury on the other hand he can fight Brian Jennings like in, in a so-called tune-up he can fight Oscar Rivas who beat Brian Jennings and then you have guys who can fight on DAZN or ESPN or ESPN plus like Joseph Parker 
Alexander Povetkin, uh, Joe Joyce, Andy Ruiz, Tom Schwartz, and uh, Sergey Kuzman. And um, I'm telling you, so Fury would be straight. Wilder, on the other hand, let's see, he has Brazil. He can fight. He can fight Louis Ortiz again. He can fight Adam Kalnacki. But when you line Joshua and Joshua's and um, Fury's names up, I mean, what Wilder can do pales in comparison. So, like I said, we may never see AJ versus Wilder. And if we do, 2021, 2022, paging Allen Heyman. Come in. So, these premier guys are being ill-advised. I'm telling you because, it, look, some of them can stay, but you got to feel for Charlo because the, the, the entire middleweight division is DAZN and, and ESPN um, for a couple guys. And you got to feel bad for Wilder. And... Wilder and Charlo need to be the first two to jump because they're back. It's like they 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 run out of moves, and Eddie Hearn and the Bob Father, Bob Arum, they took the play away from Premier Boxing. At least for these two guys, where do you go? Now, of course, you can slip a Jared Hurd up a weight class and you can kind of get creative but the fights people want to see for Young Maul are against the DAZN guys now do you protect Jamal based on the fact that the world knows he lost to a guy that he was expected to steamroll or do you feed him to the big boys it's just, <clears throat> if Wilder and Charlo don't jump, there could be the same freezing out that Premier did to everyone else for a few years. Imagine the tables turning on that one. Ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Let's move on. Lastly, we have a loaded boxing schedule that'll take us to the middle of the year. And I'll, I'll list some of the fights. Mind you, the fights don't include fighters we'll see later in 2019. And then some of the fighters on the list and some who are setting up fights, we'll, we'll see them later in 2019. Okay, so... Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, Gervonta Davis, Gary Russell Jr., they'll all fight later this year. So they're not included. Davis just fought. And um, also, <clears throat> as I said, following the following guys will fight later this year or later again this year. Like your Terrence Crawfords, your Errol Spence Juniors, your Vasily Lomachenko's, your Tevin Farmers, your Saul Alvarez, Manny Pacquiao, Keith Thurman Jr., Jerron Ennis, Jared Hurd, Alexander Usyk, Callum Smith, Regis Progray, Robert Easter Jr., maybe, uh, Devin Haney, Tiafimo Lopez, Josh Taylor, Dillian White, Danny Garcia, Jesse Vargas, Saddam Ali, Josh Kelly, Jaime Munguia, Tony Harrison, Dem Charlo Boys, Kel Brook, Erickson Lubin, Triple G, Demetrius Andrade, Jeff Horn, David Lemieux, Chris Eubank, Billy Joke Saunders, Jesse Hart, Crusher Kovalev, Marcus Brown, Chocolatito, Monster Inoue, Santa Cruz, etc., etc. So, um, <clears throat> a 
Let's see. Friday, this week, Friday, March 15th, Philadelphia, on the zone. We got a title fight, Tevin Farmer versus John O'Carroll. 12 rounds for Farmer's IBF World Junior Lightweight title. Okay, another title fight, the zone, same night, same place, Philadelphia. Katie Taylor, Rose Vellante for Taylor's IBF, WBA, WBO Women's World Lightweight Title Unification. I'm sorry, it's a unification. <clears throat> um, Gabriel Rosado, Magic Soyeki, 10 rounds for middleweight class. Um, that's a good fight. Hank Lundy, Avery Sparrow, 10 rounds, lightweights. So that's a nice little card, March 15th, Philadelphia. I'm not sure if I drive up to that. I'm not sure. March 16th, Arlington, Texas. Fox pay-per-view. Title fight. Errol Spence Jr. versus Mikey Garcia. 12 rounds for Spence's IBF World Welterweight title. You guys going to roast Spence like you did uh, my man Golovkin and my man uh, Lomachenko? Or you just want to give him a pass? Because everybody's looking forward to this one. Also on that card, you got David Benavidez coming back to take on uh, J. Leon Love, super middleweight fight. You got uh, Luis Neri versus Mick Joe Arroyo, bantamweight. And uh, Chris Ariola versus Jean-Pierre Augustine, heavyweights. Oh, and uh, <laughs> the return of Prince Charles Martin fighting 10 rounds against uh, Gregory Corbin. March 17th, Sunday. So you got Friday, Saturday, Sunday this week. ESPN Plus, we got Michael Conlon versus Ruben Garcia. We got Louis Colazzo versus Sammy Vargas, or Samuel Vargas, if you will. Patty Barnes, Oscar Mojica, and Josue Vargas versus Adriano Ramirez. That's the ESPN Plus card. It's not some bad names on that. March 23rd, California, ESPN and ESPN Deporte. Kubrat Pulev versus uh, Bogdan Dinu, 10 rounds. I think they got Pulev on standby in case uh, something happens with Jarrell Miller, but Pulev would have to win this fight and uh, not get cut or anything like that. Jesse Magdaleno versus Rico Ramos. Rico Ramos is my man on uh, Facebook. Um, Javier Molina is on that card. So that's uh, ESPN, regular ESPN, March 23rd. Also March 23rd, ESPN Plus. Um, you got Samuel Bowen versus Ryan Wheeler. That's for Bowen's British Junior Lightweight title. And when you talk about those British championships, man, I'm telling you, those belts almost, while most people believe the WBC is, like, better than the other belts for some reason, I don't know where they got that nonsense from. Um, the fans there treat those British titles, man, like, like we treat our, our world titles here, the real world titles. Um, also, Nathan Gorman is on that card. And if Nathan Gorman wins, they're trying to set up a fight between him and uh, Daniel Dubois, Triple D, which if you think big fights, that's a big fight over there. I mean, that will draw tens of thousands of people. Also on March 23rd, here we go again. So we got an ESPN card, we got an ESPN Plus, and then on the zone, title fight, we got Charlie Edwards versus Angel Moreno for Edwards' WBC flyweight title. Okay. Um, and then we got Lawrence Okoli versus Wadi Camacho, and that's for Okoli's uh, British and Camacho's Commonwealth Cruiserweight titles. Once again, those those fights, 
those belts, when you talk about those British and those Commonwealth titles, I'm telling you, fans go crazy. Sunday, March 24th, Oxon Hill, Maryland. I'll be there, Fox Sports 1. You got Lamont Peterson versus Sergey Lipinets. 12-round welterweight fight. And the return of Anthony Peterson. In my opinion, the more talented of the Petersons, he just he could just never put it together and win a title. And, I mean, this is kind of like his last shot. And he takes on Argenis Mendez, which <laughs> it's not a cakewalk. So we'll see how that turns out. March 30th, Philadelphia, ESPN, ESPN Deporte. We got Alexander Vozdik defending his WBC light heavyweight title against uh, Dudu Ngumbu. <laughs> Dudao. How about that? <laughs> and then you got uh, the new Ray Robinson fighting uh, Aegis Cavalucas. Cav I always have problems with his name. Good fighter, though. That's a decent fight. Also, uh, March 30th on the zone, Liam Smith, Sam Eggington. Good fight. Also, Anthony Fowler, Scott Fitzgerald. That's in uh, Liverpool, England. Also, March 30th, Indio, California, the zone. King Rai, Ryan Garcia versus Jose Lopez. Ten rounds. Got a title fight, Angel Acosta. Ganigan Lopez for Acosta's WBO Junior Flyweight title. Okay. You got Joet Gonzalez and Antonio Orozco also on that card. And Eduardo Hernandez. So that should be a... That's not bad. It's not a bad card. April 12th, Los Angeles, ESPN Plus. Title fight. Vasily, high-tech Lomachenko. Anthony Krola, 12 rounds for Lomachenko's WBO, WBA lightweight titles. Also, Zerto will be on that card. Gilberto Ramirez and um, Arnold Barboza and, versus uh, Mike Alvarado also on that card. April 13th, ESPN Plus title fight. Billy Joe Saunders. Okay. Shifat is, is Sufi, 12 rounds for the vacant WBO <laughs> interim super middleweight title. So Jones is going to super middleweight. Excuse me, Billy Joe is going for a super middleweight belt. Um, also April 13th on DAZN, we got Jaime Munguia defending his WBO junior middleweight title versus Dennis Hogan. Also on that card is uh, Diego De La Hoya. April 13th, Fox Sports 1, Caleb Truex returns against Peter Quillen. That'll be either 10 or 12 rounds, whatever they sign off for. And on that uh, same card, uh, Sergey Devrianchenko versus uh, Jack Colke in a IBF middleweight eliminator. And you know what that means. So if Errol Spence beats Mikey Garcia, you can look at the winner of the Darian Chinko Colke, or you can look at uh, Figueroa, who fought a few weeks ago. One of those two, I bet, gets the shot at Spence Jr. April 13th, same night. I might go to this fight. Uh... Atlantic City, New Jersey, Showtime, Clarissa Shields, Christina Hammer, 10 rounds for the IBF, WBA, WBC, WBO. The winner's undisputed, folks. Um, Somebody else good is on that card. Uh, uh, who was it? I, I can't remember, but I, might, I think I'm going to go to that. A week later, April 20th. New York ESPN pay-per-view. This is a good pay-per-view. I don't know how much it's, it's probably not even going to be 70 something dollars. It might be one of those 59. This I would purchase. Title fight, Terrence Crawford versus Amir Khan. Amir Khan is a live dog in this fight. 
is for Crawford's WBO welterweight title. Do not sleep on Amir Khan. He's going to give Terrence Crawford a lot of trouble, especially early with that hand speed. Crawford's going to have to make the adjustments, but I'm telling you, Amir Khan is going to fight like a man possessed in this fight. Also, uh, Shakur Stevenson steps up to Christopher Diaz. This is a good fight. This will be the ultimate test for Shakur. Also on the card is Teofimo Lopez. He's hot right now. I mean hot. Gotta watch him. Must see TV. Also must see TV is Felix Verdejo. And Bob Aaron made it known to Felix that, listen, son, this is a... Uh, this is it for you. Like, you need to show me something or um, <laughs> we might be letting you go at the uh, top rank banner. And I, I don't think the Bob Father meant to be uh, to sound that cruel, but he's trying to light a fire under Felix. And I tell you what, if Felix Verdejo knew, if he knows who he's stepping in the ring with, um... He he doesn't have to worry about the Bob Father lighting a fire under him because um, he's going to fight Brian Vasquez. And Brian Vasquez is a sure enough test for this guy. Um, Vasquez is 37 wins, 3 losses. Um, he's got 20 knockouts. And I got to be honest, man, this might be the wrong fight. He... he uh, <laughs> It might be the wrong fight for him, but it, but you don't know. Um, and uh, Vasquez has been in there with um, Beltran. He's been in there with uh, Javier Fortuna, Sergio Yeo Thompson, Jose Felix Jr. I mean, he's been in there with some guys, and he's held his own um, against most of them. So he... Uh, Verdejo better be on his A game for sure. No, no question. I mean, he better he better be on his A game, or he's gonna find himself in some trouble. Uh, what else we got? April twenty. Oh, um, Carlos Adama is Frank Galar. Gal Gal oh, excuse me. Let me try this again. Carlos Adama is and Frank Galarza. Good fight, also. I mean, that that card from top to bottom. That's a good card. That's worth paying for. April 20th, Fox, Danny Garcia, Adrian Granados. April 26th, Englewood, California, DAZN. Sarasiket Sor, Runvisai, or Waxhill, whatever you want to call him, versus uh, Juan Francisco Estrada rematch. And speaking of that, now that I'm thinking about it, um... One of the referees in the Sean Porter fight, the one who had it, I think it was um, 116-112 for Porter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Steve Morrow. Steve Morrow also got it wrong in the uh, wrong side. Estrada first fight and so we're going to put him on the list to keep an eye on Steve Morrow and I'll, I'll try to look at some more of his history but keep an eye on that guy so the wrong beside Estrada card is going to be fantastic on the zone Daniel Roman versus TJ Donahue for the WBA and IBF junior featherweight unification that's a good fight also, Jesse Vargas, Scott Quigg, Anthony Sims Jr. will be on that card. The zone is loaded, man. April 27th, the zone. Kirill Relic versus Regis Progray for Relic's WBA Jr. welterweight title. Um, that's the World Boxing Super Series. Good fight. Also, Zalani Tete versus Nonito Donaire for the WBO and WBA Bantamweight unification. World Boxing Super Series, the zone. That's April 27th. May 2nd, Las Vegas, Golden Boy Boxing 
It'll be on ringtv.com. You can stream it. Um, and in May 4th, Stockton, California, ESPN, Artur Betterbiev defends against Sven Fornling. And then Jerwin Ancajas also defends his junior IBF Junior Bantamweight title. That same night on the zone, you got Saul Canelo Alvarez, Daniel Jacobs for the WBC, WBA, and IBF middleweight titles, unification. Uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. will be on that card also. May 11th, ESPN, Miguel Burchelt, Francisco Vargas rematch. Should be great. And that's for Burchelt's uh, WBC Jr. lightweight title. May 11th, Fox, Jared Hurd, Julian Williams for Hurd's IBF and WBA Jr. middleweight titles. I think that fight is going to be better than people think. Julian Williams is not going to roll over. May 18th in Scotland on DAZN, Emmanuel Rodriguez and the Monster and New Way for Rodriguez IBF Bantamweight title. And that's in the uh, World Boxing Super Series. May 25th, ESPN Top Ranked Boxing. May 25th, Fox Sports 1 Boxing premiere on Fox Sports 1. June 1st, The Zone. Anthony Joshua, Jarrell Miller for Joshua's IBF, WBA, WBO heavyweight titles. June 1st, Fox Sports 1, PBC. June 8th, ESPN, top rank. June 15th, ESPN, top rank. June 15th, The Zone. Marius Breedis versus Christoph Glowacki for um, that's the, the World Boxing Super Series. And then you got Junior Dorticos, Andrew Tabidi. That's good. That's uh, The Zone. I like that. I like those two fights. June 21st, excuse me, June 23rd, PBC on Fox. June 28th, top rank on ESPN. July 13th, top rank on ESPN. July 13th, Fox PBC on Fox Sports 1. July 20, July 20th, PBC on Fox. So that, that'll be one of the bigger names when they put it on Fox. August 3rd, PBC on Fox. That'll be bigger name. August 24th, PBC on Fox Sports 1. September 1st, PBC on Fox. September 21st, PBC on Fox Sports 1. November 9th. Um, it looks like ESPN and top rank on ESPN and PBC. December 14th, PBC on Fox. So, And I know Premier likes to close the year out in December with something big. So we'll see who that's going to be. So um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to talk too long. Just gave you the schedule. I mean, you know what? I'll, instead of doing that, I should have just... Next time, you know what? I'll cut the video short and tell you that I'm going to copy and paste the schedule at the bottom. So, hey... Don't give Earl Spencer Jr. the same business you gave Golovkin and Lomachenko. Don't do it because Premier is the best. But uh, make sure you watch the fight and we'll uh, talk about it sometime next week. Catch you.